In any age which poses great problems, among the finest human virtues are humor, adventure, and romance. For a nation confronted daily by material worries, these virtues leavened the week's news. As November the 20th neared, world interest in the royal romance quickened. These special pre-wedding photographs were taken at Buckingham Palace on the royal family's return from Scotland. Seventeen-year-old Princess Margaret will be her sister's principal bridesmaid. Already, details of the wedding dress are sought by international fashion designers. Orders for a similar gown will stimulate British designs. The Abbey wedding will focus attention on the girl who will be queen and her consort. In Holland, too, a nation shared the happiness of its royal family. At Utrecht Cathedral, Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands attends the christening of her youngest grandchild, Princess Marika. Representatives of all the Scandinavian countries attended the ceremony. And to help an underwriter, father and mother, what is there of your answer? Maria Christina, I do you in the name of the Father. Mr. Churchill's daughter Mary, deputized for her father, who is the godfather of the princess. Amen. During the Dutch Queen's convalescence after a long illness, Princess Juliana acts as regent. The infant princess is the fourth daughter of Prince Bernard and Princess Juliana. From romance to adventure is not a very long step. Though much of the pioneer's glamour is eclipsed by fast-moving events in a scientific age, its spirit of courage still lives. It was the enterprise of Britain's early pioneers that helped to found the British Commonwealth. And still, those young countries hold a deep attraction for Britons today. Since the war's end, 6,000 people have gone to Australia to begin a new life. At Tilbury, the Ormond is taking another 1,000 immigrants, 250 of whom are children. If you ask these people why they want to try their luck in another land, this is what they will tell you. Well, I've been a bit unsettled in that since I've been demobbed and uh, getting a chance to go to Australia, I decided to go there to see if I can make a better life out there in what is no country. Well, I've been up in a very good position and I'm going to try my luck. After 22 years in the forces, I got a, a, a good chance of a job and I'm taking it. After four years of married life, no home to go to, living in rooms, is no good. That's the reason I'm leaving England. Their spirit in an uncertain world will help to bring them success in a new life. Meanwhile, human ingenuity is making domestic difficulties in other countries. The bottom of Bremen Harbor in Germany is littered with many tons of coal which have fallen off during loading. After 20 years, the water is now being drenched. Huge pumps lift the mud from the bottom and pipelines carry it to a waste site in the town. There, Bremen citizens gather the coal out of the mud. One person can reclaim nearly 300 weights of coal daily. Those near the front have a better chance, but even at the back, the search is still fruitful. Although coal production in the Ruhr is improving, Germany again faces a bleak, fuelless winter. This is the people's way of overcoming another hardship. But the week's news also brought a laugh. To London's Olympia came Eric Barker and the Merry-Go-Round gang for their 200th radio performance. The weekly hero of 12 million listeners, Eric Barker, turns out to be a screen heartthrob as well. Mr. Eric Hartrop Barker. Mr. Samuel No Dollars Goldwyn. How do you do, sir? <laughs> is there something you'd like to do with this? Yeah. I beg your pardon? Oh, the, uh, to the crowd, yes. I... 
bit of warm today, since it's golden. I, uh, excuse me if you would. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, well, um, carry on smoking. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, may I introduce the staff of the Waterlog Spa? First of all, Commander High Price, late of the... Ice! Keep it dark! Yes, of course. Excuse me one moment. <laughs> yes, and uh, here we have our resident prima donna, Dame Barbara Sumner. Digger Dan. Uh, oh. And, of course, Herr Crow. I don't think I've forgotten anybody, I'll just make sure. Uh, let me see, we've had Herr Crow. Yes, that's great. And, of course, Flying Officer Kite. Oh, I say, I rather care for that. <laughs> And I, of course, would like to uh, introduce my chairman, Lord Waterlogged, to the Pathy Cockerel. <laughs> Hello, Cockerel, how's yourself? Richmond? Coming, my lord. And, of course, my secretary. Is there anything you would care to say, Miss uh, Hackney? Uh, only that I, I think you're so very, very wonderful, Mr. Barker. <laughs> <laughs> Steady, Barker. <clears throat> I have much pleasure in presenting all you film boys with a defence medal for British films. <laughs> 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 